It's decided to get warmer today. I still haven't experienced, I guess, a heat wave per se yet. And what did I read today? Usually during these times, there's a lot of things like mosquitoes around the area too. How about this one? Where apparently in certain areas, they're going to use things like drones to deal with it. This one says, JICA supports drone AI deployment to fight mosquitoes. A Japanese startup, Sora Technology, is set to introduce an innovative approach that utilizes drones and artificial intelligence to efficiently identify and target mosquito breeding sites. The first phase of the project to be funded by the Japan International Cooperation Agency is scheduled to start in the country from this August to March of next year. Drones equipped with cameras and sensors will survey areas, capturing images and environmental data such as water temperature and vegetation. Using AI algorithms, the drones will map out and treat stagnant water bodies with eco-friendly larvicides, effectively reducing the mosquito population. The data will be analyzed to pinpoint which water bodies are likely to contain mosquito larvae, allowing for targeted spraying. Is it kind of like one of those things where they're just putting nature against nature, for example? It says, in addition, operational research will be conducted to assess the cost effectiveness and impact of the technology with the aim of reducing malaria cases. This initiative seeks to improve the efficacy of malaria control efforts, minimize human exposure to chemicals, reduce costs, and enhance the effectiveness of malaria prevention measures. This should technically be considered as transporting living creatures, correct? Where a lot of places, they actually make it illegal to do that with drones, even if it's little bugs and all that. I've seen some people actually do this before in terms of, again, that idea of using nature versus nature, for example, people having issues with ants and what they do is they actually put spiders around the area purposely, just so I guess they start eating them up and all that. But either way, I guess it'll be more common in terms of people using drones for these types of applications. And with that thought of using drones, this was kind of interesting. It seems like it was more information in regards to that assassination attempt in the US when it came to their former president, Donald Trump, and how there was so much controversy and how the Secret Service didn't have their own drones or they had counter drone measures, which they say didn't work, so they couldn't catch the suspect early. Well, how about this one? This one says they're planning to use more drones now. This one says Secret Service to amp up drone use after Trump assassination bid. The US Secret Service plans to increase its use of surveillance drones following the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. The agency's acting director said Friday, we did not have a drone on site at the July 13th campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, where a gunman opened fire on the Republican White House candidate, said Ronald Roe, who took over after the previous director resigned. Trump was slightly wounded in the right ear, two rally attendees were seriously injured, and a 50-year-old Pennsylvania firefighter was killed when the gunman, Thomas Matthew Crooks, fired eight shots from a nearby rooftop. Crooks, 20, was shot dead by a Secret Service counter sniper on a building behind the stage where Trump had begun speaking. We thought we might have had it covered with a human eye, he said, but clearly we are going to change our approach now and we are going to leverage technology and put those unmanned aerial systems up. Crooks flew a drone near the rally site for 11 minutes, about two hours before the attack, according to the FBI. So if they intend to use more drones in the future, will that mean there will be a blanket ban, for example, in terms of drones for other people. Standard no-fly zones, for example, when it comes to things like political rallies. At the same time, that makes absolutely no sense in terms of the logic saying, oh, we didn't think we needed it because if you brought in, for example, counter drone tech, as they say, which malfunctioned, then you must have anticipated where there's a possibility that there could be, let's just say, a bad actor using the tech. So why would you have your own tech in terms of a drone, for example, flying around to potentially counter it as well. That makes absolutely no sense. On top of the fact where apparently people offered to use their drones, for example, in the area and they denied it. Again, the more you think about this, the more it doesn't make sense anyways in terms of the excuses that are coming up. And this was kind of an interesting, I guess, controversy again with the Olympics where apparently it dealt with an AI related ad by Google. This one says, Google pulls AI ad for Olympics following backlash. Google has pulled an Olympic ad for its chatbot Gemini from Airways following backlash for the way it depicts a little girl using artificial intelligence to write a fan letter. The ad titled Dear Sydney" showed a girl's dad prompting the AI chatbot to help write a letter to her favorite athlete 
U.S. hurdler and sprinter Sydney McLaughlin Levron. Google launched Gemini, formerly known as Bard, last year following the surge in popularity of OpenAI's ChatGBT. Gemini, help my daughter write a letter telling Sydney how inspiring she is, the father said in the ad prompting Gemini. The commercial then briefly shows the draft Gemini produced and closes with footage of the little girl running on the tracks with a text overlay that says, quote, a little help from Gemini. So apparently the reason why people, I guess, were outraged over this per se is because the child isn't actually writing something with their own thoughts and words and you're teaching them to just let a robot do it, for example. So with that in mind, they took it down. That was kind of interesting, I guess, to think about. One of the bad things too is I guess if a child continually relies on AI to write stuff for them, they eventually won't be able to really think for themselves, correct? In terms of being able to express what they feel at the same time. Can you imagine if you're someone who receives quote, I guess fan mail in this way where you get thousands of duplicate responses word from word because everyone was using AI for example. I guess it puts more value in terms of people using their own thoughts and words, huh? And in terms of that thought, again, in terms of, I guess, controversy when it comes to the Olympics this year, apparently when it comes to boxing, there's another person where people are claiming they failed a gender test before and they weren't allowed to compete, I guess, against women. But in the Olympics, apparently it was allowed. And not surprisingly, I guess, for a lot of people in their mind, the person won because it says here, second boxer embroiled in gender controversy wins Olympic match. The second of two female boxers whose gender identities have recently been scrutinized won her first fight at the Paris Olympics on Friday. Lin Yuting of Taiwan defeated Satora Turnipakova of Uzbekistan in the 57 kilogram round of 16 match by unanimous decision and advanced to the quarterfinals. Her victory follows Thursday's win by Algeria's Imane Khalif, whose gender identity has also come into question in recent days, prompting a social media firestorm. The participation of Lin and Khalif in Olympic women's boxing has sparked global outrage in the recent days after reports resurfaced that the pair failed to meet gender eligibility tests at the Women's World Boxing Championships in New Delhi last year. Sporting officials at the time alleged that the boxers failed an unspecified test because they had male chromosomes. So that's one of the interesting things too in reading this. It seems like a lot of people are claiming the tests before were based on testosterone, where, oh, it's basically the person has high levels of testosterone, which is more like a male, but this is actually based on chromosomes in terms of the tests they did. So that would scientifically lean more towards, for example, whether or not the person is a quote, I guess, man or woman. But in general, I don't know what's going on this year with the Paris Olympics, so much controversy and stuff. Can you imagine in this boxing match where those two, for example, will actually be in the final match in the end? I don't know what's going on, but this year's Olympics just seems like it's non-stop controversy and scandals for some reason, huh?
Alright, see you guys later.